grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, Welcome to Morning Prayer. My name is Tim Brumfield, Director of Music Ministries, Organist, and Choirmaster here at St. Gregory's Episcopal Church, downtown Boca Raton, Florida. If you would like to follow along with me this morning, I'm beginning on page 80 in the Book of Common Prayer. Once again, welcome to all. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 119, verses 145 
through 176. It's found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 775. I call with my whole heart, answer me, O Lord, that I may keep your statutes. I call to you, O oh, that you would save me, I will keep your decrees. Early in the morning I cry out to you, for you in your word is my trust. My eyes are open in the night watches, that I may meditate upon your promise. Hear my voice, O Lord, according to your loving kindness, according to your judgments. Give me life. They draw near who in malice persecute me. They are very far from your law. You, O Lord, are near at hand, and all your commandments are true. Long have I known from your decrees that you have established them forever. Behold my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me according to your promise, give me life. Deliverance is far from the wicked, for they do not study your statutes. Great is your compassion, O Lord. Preserve my life according to your judgments. There are many who persecute and oppress me, yet I have not swerved from your decrees. I look with loathing at the faithless, for they have not kept your word. See how I love your commandments. O Lord, in your mercy, preserve me. The heart of your word is truth. All your righteous judgments endure forevermore. Rulers have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I am as glad because of your promise as one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I hate and abhor them. But your law is my love. Sometimes a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have they who love your law. For them, there is no stumbling block. I have hoped for your salvation, O Lord, and I have fulfilled your commandments. I have kept your decrees, and I have loved them deeply. I have kept your commandments and decrees, for all my ways are before you. My cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips shall pour forth your praise when you teach me your statutes. My tongue shall sing of your promise, for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand be ready to help me, 
for I have chosen your commandments. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let me live, and I will praise you, and let your judgments help me. I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. Search for your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Our first reading this morning is from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 through 34. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If you are hungry, eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for your condemnation. About the other things, I will give instructions when I come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 9, verses 9 through 17. As Jesus was walking home, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, 
follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Then the disciples of John came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak, for the patch pulls away from the cloak and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine poured into old wineskins. Otherwise, the skins burst, and all the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation, and on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forevermore. The first song of Isaiah. Let us now meditate on the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith where there is discord, harmony, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved, as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. We come to that time of offering our own prayers of intercessions and thanksgivings. We pray for all those on our prayer list. We pray for Gwen, for Tom, for David, for Joe and Justine, for John and Angela. We ask God's blessings and peace be upon those who have lost loved ones. Pray for Dale in the loss of Mary Ann. We lift to you all those who are sick or suffering, especially during this time of COVID. We lift to you all those around the world who do not have enough, enough food, enough access to health care, enough peace, enough love, enough joy. We pray for peace. We pray for all those who live under the threat of war and for victims of war everywhere. We 
we pray for our world and our leaders. We pray for our church. We pray for our staff. We pray for all those who have contributed to the capital campaign. We pray for our construction workers. We pray for all those who are working diligently on our building. We pray for Father Sherman and his family, for Father Thomas and his family. And now let us pray together the Lord, the prayer that the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for being with me this morning. Once again, my name is Tim Brumfield, Director of Music Ministry, Organist, and Choir Master here at St. Gregory's Episcopal Church of downtown Boca Raton, Florida. I'm going to switch the camera and I'm going to go downstairs and end us with a meditation and we can also see one another. We just had a rainstorm move through and uh, it got rather dark in here and uh, as I was leaving prayer and listening to the rain, I was also looking out for any leaks that might occur, but fortunate, fortunately, I did not see any. So that is wonderful. Um, we may be able to get our organ back in, uh, in a few weeks. Hi, everybody. How are you? Um, so work is uh, progressing on uh, securing the roof so that we can get uh, things within the sanctuary a, a little bit more back to normal. Um, that means getting the organ back up and running. It's going to take a while to do that. So, um, but hopefully that will happen uh, within the next uh, couple of weeks. So I'm very excited about that. So I'm going to scroll through and see if there are any requests. Play whatever you want to play. <laughs> Thanks, Cassandra. Hey, Craig, nice to see you back with us. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Sharon, Dale, Pat. Well, as you know, as I've told you, this is one of my favorite times of the week, uh, uh, Wednesday and Thursday mornings, to um, be able to share with you uh, these live uh, times of prayer together, times of coming together uh, virtually, and there, there's a realness about this that uh, I think people don't really understand. It's real for me because I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm uh, praying with you, so I hope it's real for you that you're not just uh, um, uh, watching the TV screen, but that you really do feel 
that you are connected uh, with me here at this moment. Um, so I am going to close this out with a, um, I'm feeling peace this morning. And um, I'm going to be playing a piece on Sunday morning uh, dedicated to Grace Pertile because uh, she's requested it many times. And uh, it's an arrangement um, of let there be peace on earth. So um, I kind of had that on my mind this morning. So as we pray for peace around the world, let us just meditate on this beautiful piece of um, American heritage, American musical heritage. Let there be peace on earth. Thank you so much for being with me this morning. I'm going to make my way back up to the, to the loft, to the control center, and I bid you a wonderful day, and I'm going to offer a final prayer and blessing. Almighty God, you have given 
us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Blessings to all. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.